So the event was called the first Voice of Muslim Youth um, Provincial Election Engagement Session. So Voice of Muslim Youth is an organization, but um, I volunteered to um, coordinate a political engagement session. So it's, it's like an all-candidates debate without the debate. So the focus is on engaging the audience and the participants as opposed to the politicians engaging with each other. And, and their platforms. And their platforms right? and accusing and, each yeah. other of stuff. And um, because I feel that just takes away from a lot of the issues. It's, it's actually a way of wasting time because, and again, also, it's not engaging the community at all. It's, it's just them engaging each other. Um, so again, people who are watching the video will notice that I, at some point, will stop um, some of the politicians <laughs> when um, I think they're going into what I consider to be um, debate mode, when they're sort of saying that this party did something or accusing a certain party of something. Um, I'm not saying that you know those issues might be legitimate, but I felt in this forum um, it wasn't necessarily fair and it was also a waste of time when they really could be talking about the issues and answering the questions directly. And there were specific questions or issues that were brought up in ahead of time. Exactly. So each politician was, was given um, six specific questions ahead of time that had been identified as priorities for Muslim youth, um, either by Muslim youth or by Muslim youth workers. So those six priority areas related to child and youth mental health, um, job creation and underemployment, tuition fees, um, academic standards at Beacon schools, um, and supports for refugees and immigrants, and um, also the conditions at the Ottawa Carlton Detention Center. So, you know, we had specific questions, particularly looking at um, refugee youth communities, um, because a large portion of uh, the Muslim community here in Ottawa is um, coming from refugee backgrounds. Um, either they are directly refugees themselves or the children of refugees. So often um, the disadvantages and issues facing these communities are overlooked. Um, and also understanding that it's, a, it's different to be a refugee than being an immigrant. It's a very different situation. Like one, you know, one out of, you know, like one in four immigrants in Ottawa is a refugee. So it's a very different situation. So our questions were very different than a lot of the questions these candidates would have got, or will get in other all candidates debates. Um, and so it was a challenge. So they did, they did get a chance to do their homework. Um, and, you know, I, I was happy with some of the responses. Some of the responses I think were evasive. Um, I think there was definitely, I think definitely in terms of the, the responses to the um, situation at the Ottawa Carleton um, Detention Center, I wasn't really happy with many of the responses. I felt they were evasive, but um, I still think at least they were asked because in a lot of other forms, they're not going to be asked anything like that. So I think in that way, this event was quite unique in terms of the questions and in terms of the format, the fact that they weren't having a, a chance to dish at each other, they had to really ask, answer the questions from their party's perspective and respond to the community. And, and they came with their own stories of how they got involved. And I felt that that was very important. Um, again, because I think a lot of the reasons why a lot of people don't vote, and that's not just the Muslim community, that's every community, is like, you know, who are these people? Who are the people who want to be politicians? Weird people. So I really wanted them to humanize themselves and also um, explain, like, why would you go into politics? Because I think when people understand that, people start thinking about, well, why would people want to do this? Um, it starts humanizing politicians. It starts getting people to think, well, maybe I would want to do that, too. Because, again, part of engagement is also seeing that people from our community start getting involved with politics in different levels as well. So when you can relate to the story of a particular politician, you realize, oh, maybe, maybe I'm concerned about that, too. So um, I chose candidates who I knew would have a very interesting backstory. Um, unfortunately, not all our candidates were able to be there, but I knew that three out of the four candidates who I had chosen actually came from refugee backgrounds. So they had, and again, that would relate to a lot of the youth who would attend because they, you know, they had something to relate to. Um, it was great to learn that um, the fourth candidate, the Green Party candidate, Axel, also you know, had a parents with an immigrant background. It was a story he was able to share. Because I think it was very good for the youth to have to see people who could, they could relate to in some way on a personal level um, as individuals. And I think that was an important factor and it was very important to have that as a component of this session. So I think, you know, in future, when we, we talk about youth engagement and politics, we have to think about the human side and, and humanize these politicians. Again, they talk about themselves, um, not just their parties and their platforms. Um, because I think definitely, for better or for worse, People do vote for people. I think we've definitely seen that recently with the situation with Jack Layton. Um, you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens to that party afterwards because I think people do vote for individuals. People do vote because they like someone. And I don't know if that's actually a good thing, but it's a true thing. So, you know, if, if we're looking at, um, you know, trying to make sure that more youth 
vote, personality is a factor, and I wanted the youth to get a chance to know who these people were. Yeah, and, and of course, the, like the issues you were talking about. Yes. But but like you're saying, it, it's it comes down to either personality or just you have to pick one person based on a whole platform as opposed to just on a specific issue. Yes, and also the reality is is that um, these people, like certain people who are running, were running in certain ridings. So you might like that great guy, but maybe he's not in your riding. <laughs> And again, also part of the session was people understanding where the writing was. People actually got to get handouts, information, making sure they knew they were registered, making sure you know if they weren't going to be there for election day that they could register. Because all that information is so important too. Because uh, something I've seen is sometimes people want to vote, but they're not able to vote on election day because of just time. The reality is like a lot of people in our community are very busy, they're overworked, we have families, we have a lot of commitments. So it's very important that um, people knew like, well, you know, actually, if you can't vote election day, you can vote earlier. You can, you can mail in your ballot. So that was also a component of it, was people actually got to have that information. And then also people got to know what their riding was. Um, and I think, you know, again, there's, we couldn't only do so much with this session, but, you know, I think there's an issue of, in, like, there's a lack of engagement issue, and there's also an issue of informed engagement. So it's also understanding that, like, you might love that one candidate, but there's a whole party to take into consideration as well. So I think um, definitely this has to be beginning of a longer process of political education of our communities. and. Um, so that they understand the system. So there's individuals, and that's important too, but there's also a system and you have to understand how it works. And I think that was why it was also so important to have each party here, because I think there's been a tendency for a lot of um, political parties do this and the communities do it to themselves. Like we feel like only this party cares about us. You know, so I think that's been an ongoing issue, particularly for visible minority communities, feeling that you have to be loyal to one party because it's the only party that cares about you. And I really wanted them to see that like, you know, each of these parties can, could, could has some understanding about what your issues are or is going to attempt to have an understanding of what your issues are. And um, I really wanted people to start opening their minds about that. You need to um, question an idea of having maybe loyalty to only one party. You need to understand those things. So um, that's why it was so important to have each, camp, each representative from each party there. Um, but again, strong representatives. I chose people who I knew would be engaging as, as speakers. Yeah. And I think when the, when the parties understand that people are engaged, they actually care about the issues that the people care about more. Exactly. And I think that's another reason why it's important to organize an event like this. People need to know that we think we're important. We're taking ourselves seriously, so you better take us seriously. And the reality is, the you know, Muslim community is a very large community. We're also a very young community. I mean, nationally, I think 40% of the Muslim community is like under 30 or something. Like, we're, we're very young. Certain part portions of Ottawa's Muslim community, uh, the Somali community, for example, 65% is youth. So um, again, we're disadvantaged by two ways, both because we're racialized communities, we're a religious minority that is really in the context of post 9-11, not, you know, is discriminated against, but also we're young. And I don't know how much politicians in general take young voters seriously. So I think that was another aspect of this too, is like, understand what young people are concerned about. Young people are concerned about tuition fees, young people are concerned about What's going on in schools because, you know, you might find out you're graduating and you actually don't have the same standard education as somebody else who went to another school in your city because there's problems with the standard education at each school. Um, these are, you know, young people are concerned about jobs. And young people are concerned about issues of youth in the criminal justice system because there's, things are happening to them, things are happening to members of their families, their friends. And young people's attitude towards the criminal justice system might be different than their elders because you know it's, it, if you have friends, if you have family who end up getting arrested and incarcerated, you're not going to write them off. They're your friends and your family. So your attitude towards conditions in prisons and detention centers can be very different. And I think it's important for um, politicians and also other community members who are older to understand that perspective and realize that you know if they start talking about the issues that concern us, maybe more of us will start actually voting.